Welcome to Moat Cottage. We are finally getting some much needed rain on our homestead. We haven't had much since the start of summer. It's been a dry four months. Now the garden is getting rehydrated and it will come back to life again. I also have four water tanks, which makes me feel so wealthy. In the larder pantry, I'm still busy preserving food for the winter. I've canned up some apple butter and I always seem to find space on my shelves, no matter how full I think they are. Of course, this encourages me to keep canning any chance I get to keep filling up the pantry shelves as much as I possibly can. <laughs> this boy started to crow the other day. I've been putting off this task for a few weeks as it's one of those rare jobs that is easy to procrastinate. He is five months old, so it's definitely time. These chickens are covered in butter and herbs and they'll be roasted in the oven. The meat will be used to make chicken soup, which I'll pressure can, and the broth will be made out of the bones. The excess chicken bone broth is also canned up separately. When I'm in the kitchen, there's always numerous things happening at once. The dehydrators have just finished drying more carrot and celery. I'm making cinnamon rolls. It's a basic dough that I roll out into a rectangle and cover with a cinnamon sugar and butter mixture, which will caramelize while cooking. This will get cooked in the slow cooker on greased parchment paper. Once they're cooked, you can store them in an airtight container for a few days. They last quite well. Although I do keep them in the fridge. My friend John has gifted me another three bags of mushroom compost. The last three bags went on all my pots and containers, as well as what is now the turnip garden bed. This mushroom compost will go on as many of the vegetable garden beds as possible. I'll spread it about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm always feeding my soil with something natural, whatever I can get or make for free. I don't use chemicals. The garden is always giving me food every season, all year round, for 20 years. So it's important for me to keep the soil alive, well fed and healthy. I feed it compost that I make from veggie scraps, poultry poop, straw from the deep litter flooring, as well as the autumn leaves, feathers and all the other good stuff that goes into composts. And to feed the garden, I use alpaca poo as well as well composted sheep, horse, cow manure, worm tea, worm castings, comfrey tea, crushed eggshells. The small weeds that get pulled out of the garden get left and dry out on top of the soil. They're like a mulch and obviously mushroom compost. I don't need tools to plant in the vegetable garden as it's so beautiful and alive. I can just use my hands. The more I feed my compost and soil, the better my soil and plants give back. 
I'm planting four varieties of garlic this year. All are hard neck varieties that store for about eight months at least, some are up to 12 months. They are all different strengths and suited to my climate. There are varieties available to suit all the different climates in the world, so you should be able to grow garlic too, if you're not already growing it. The varieties I'm sowing today are Melbourne Market, Valiant and Spanish Roja. Now the mushroom compost can just break down and all the microorganisms can spread around the garden and it can just make my garden grow beautifully. These are the turnips that I was thinning out the other day. They grow so fast. The cinnamon rolls only take 90 minutes to cook. I rotate the bowl at 60 minutes for an even cooking on the bottom of the rolls. I don't want them to burn if there's a hot spot in the slow cooker. I have the tea towel wrapped around the lid so that it can absorb the moisture. I keep it up over the lid so that it doesn't touch the sides of the slow cooker because it could burn because obviously it's quite hot. When the cinnamon rolls are ready, I serve them with a toffee sauce, but they don't really need it. It's so delicious just by themselves. Most of my tomato plants have already been pulled up but I still have tomatoes growing on two Tommy Toe plants that I'm harvesting from. As we're heading into the end of autumn, it's time to focus on harvesting and using up and preserving the frost tender annuals before they get ruined by the first frost. I keep an eye on the weather forecast to see when this may happen. I also want to use up my perennials that are going to die back a bit. They won't die off, but they will die back a bit and I won't be able to use them throughout the season of winter. I need to harvest my pumpkins before the first frost too. They're not quite ready yet. They should sound more hollow and there's still time so I'll continue to keep an eye on the forecast to make sure we're not going to get a frost and give them more time to grow and ripen up. I'm still harvesting passion fruits. They grow inside the vine, so they're hard to see until they ripen up and drop off or you can find them in there by searching. So I'm not really sure how many are left, but I'm always grateful every time I have more passion fruits to pick. I'm tying up my marjoram with some brown string so that I can hang dry it. The sage will dry better in the dehydrator at the moment because it's quite damp and there's moisture in the air and it has thick leaves so it will do better to be in the dehydrator. Mm -hmm. 
once the sage is dehydrated, it makes a perfect powder. Thanks for hanging out with me at Moat Cottage Homesteading. And for all of you who've been sharing my videos and commenting and liking, I'll see you in the next one.